We're looking now at sublimation templates and using Affinity Designer on the iPad. Although of course it's suitable for the desktop or the iPad. Um, and you can also do these quite easily in Affinity Photo. But this particular design is using Affinity Designer on the iPad. So let's have a look. What is sublimation printing? If you don't know already, dye sublimation printing is a computer printing technique which uses heat to transfer dye onto materials such as plastic, card, paper or fabric. It's very versatile. If you are unsure what sublimation is, go and Google sublimation printing. There are many, many, many websites out there um, with this reasonably new um, craft uh, in exhibit. The sublimation name was first applied because the dye was considered to make the transition between the solid and gas states without going through a liquid stage. So it, it, the, you have to heat treat the objects, of course, either some form of heat press usually or in an oven, a convection oven, and it changes the solid state of the ink into a gas, which... Uh, permeates into the surface of the object that you're printing onto. Now, uh, there are a lot of objects that will accept it, but some objects won't accept sublimation printing. And you'll have to find that out by looking it up or trial and error. So, let's set up a 3-up template for printing on standard mugs. Firstly, you might like to know that this process is equally possible, as I mentioned, using Affinity Photo on the desktop as well as the iPad. It's almost exactly the same process, just that the controls are in different places. Now this template is set up on a standard A4 size sheet of paper, so it's easy to deal with. If you prefer to use letter size, then you should adjust your dimensions accordingly, the dimensions of the guides, um, the papers and the images, of course, but you'll be familiar with that if you're used to using letter-sized paper. You can set up nearly any template the same way. So let's set the blank master. Now, I like to create presets. So you can see here, what you do to start a preset for this type of template is select the A4 print preset that comes standard with the iPad, portrait mode, transparent background and 300 dpi. But don't press OK yet. You want to create a preset you can use that refers to this type of printing. Tap, tap on the stack beside the A4 entry to bring up create a preset. So we're going to name our own preset. Rather than A4, you want to name it something else. And in my case, I've called it 3-up mug on A4. Give your preset a name, then press save and you come back to this screen. Now you can press OK and create your base canvas. And there you go. You're now presented with your A4 document in full screen mode. I prefer to work with the iPad in landscape mode, but you may differ. You might prefer the portrait mode. Now this is on its side, so I need to pinch the canvas in so it fits and is clear of the layers list. You may prefer to work in portrait mode. It's entirely up to you as I just said. It's just choice and doesn't affect the outcome. The next step is to set up the guides which are non-printing and they're on the page but don't print. Set them as shown. This set also contains a center line for both horizontal and vertical planes. Make sure you then tap Lock Guides in the Guide Manager because if you don't lock them, you can inadvertently move them and that's a real pain because you can spend ages going back to reset them. Now take your time with this. If you're not used to setting guides, um, just take your time, you'll get there. Now, as I said, Lock the Guides. That's with Guide Manager displayed. Now you can see I've got four layers there and they're all turned off at the moment so you can see the guides. You can still see them, the guides when the layers are turned on, but the layers won't print, remember? Sorry, the guides won't print. Getting ahead of myself there. Now, place your first image. So the top band is where I'm placing the first of three. 
Be aware that on a mug you have a handle, so you must leave a trim area at either end to account for this. Now these images won't be long enough to go right around a mug, unless you've got a fairly small mug, but you're putting it on from the start, from the, from the front of the mug. Think of the centre line as the exact front of the mug ahead of uh, the handle, on the opposite side to the handle. Now if you like, you can spread your images. Of course, this image is here. This image here is a set of one, two, three discrete images. So you could have one in the left panel and one in the right panel, and that way you get an even spread around the mug or tumbler or whatever you're printing on. But that's just to give you an idea. So the idea is to leave a trim edge at either end to account for the handle. Even if you enlarge this so you get a full wrap around, you've still got to leave an area for the handle. With an A4 template, you do not get a complete wraparound, of course. Now watch out for text. You need to mirror your images. See, I've got 31st of October there. If you just print that on a sheet and then transfer it to your mug or cup or, or item with the sublimation method, it, it will come out in mirror. So the 31st of October, 31st OCT, that'll be back to front which is not what you want. You can place rectangles into the areas marked by the boundaries of the guides, but if they're anything but white, then turn them off before printing. In fact, unless I actually want to print the background, I always turn them off anyway, so that you've just got your image. In this scene, for example, the blue will print, the white won't print, but the grey will. Printers don't print white, in case you haven't found that out yet. But they do print grey, quite happily. And I'll print all of those except the white. It depends how you set up your design, of course. You might have a design with a background. And it doesn't have to be square like this. You could have, you could have clouds and oceans and all sorts of scenes on there that aren't exactly a rectangle. And that would look really nice. To place smaller prints on one side of a mug or cup, for example, simply place the image in the correct quadrant. For sublimation, don't forget to mirror or flip the image so it prints correctly. Now you do this mostly in your printer. Sometimes you could do it on the image that you've created if you like, but um, it's a bit easier to keep track of your image if your image is right way around to start with and you remember when you go to print it, onto the sublimation paper that you flip the image before you print it. And that's in printer setups. And you, as I say here, you can do this best in the printer setup so your design stays easy to read on the computer. And it's as simple as that. Guides, images and printing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Spread the love. I really appreciate it.